Once in a while, a guy comes along who is smoldering hot and artistically blessed. It's rare, but this breed of man can be found posting spicy thirst traps on Instagram alongside his truly inspired art pieces. Today, we're talking to one such man. I'm Patrick Morano, and this is Queerly Up. <laughs> Joining me today is Kyle Killam, a.k.a. Wyndham Gold. He's a multi-talented individual who excels as an erotic masseur slash body worker, content creator, and visual artist. Residing in the vibrant city of Toronto, Wyndham passionately manages his massage and visual art practices. These two endeavors serve as profound avenues for him to explore and connect with the sacred. Kyle, welcome to Queerly Us. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Well, I love that you're here. I mean, so full disclosure, we already know each other. This isn't the first time we're meeting for people that don't know that. You have been on my YouTube channel. Um, we filmed a couple of times at Steamworks and you were modeling slash acting for me, which was very hot and sexy. And I appreciate that, that help. It's nice to have some eye candy in those videos. And we filmed together for OnlyFans as well. That's right. So we are acquainted <laughs> in many ways. Yes. Yeah. But today I want to get acquainted with you in another way, because I know that you are a multi-layered, multi-faceted individual. And well, to that point, you know, a lot of my YouTube content is trying to dispel the myths around sex work. People who do sex work, um, you know, are more than just one thing. They can be yeah. many different things, and you're a perfect example of that. So I want to start at the beginning, though. Let's just break it all down. Wyndham Gold is the name that you use for sex work. Yes. Kyle Killam is your real name. So explain where Wyndham Gold came from. Sure. Of course, it's got to be a story. Um, of course. Um, it comes from first, um, I don't know if you've seen Twin Peaks. Um, yeah. Yeah. Long, so, long time uh, ago. The antagonist in that is Wyndham Black. Um, and he's this mysterious sort of figure. And at the time I was kind of coming up with something, I had also I was also coming up with a name for uh my Wiccan self, which like I had this mm. very brief point in time where I was very interested in paganism. I still have a lot of interests in paganism and ritualism as a whole. Um, but in order to get your Wiccan name, you're supposed to use numerology as it relates to uh, the stars in the sky at the time and location of your birth. And you do all these little calculations mm. and each letter is worth a certain amount of, of numbers and your name needs to add up to this end number based mm. on the so Wyndham Gold adds up to my astrological number. Wow. And there it is. So, well, yeah, that was layers, ladies and gentlemen. I told you, layers here. <laughs> this isn't just... Layers. So my my sex work name is Eddie Stone, and that just comes... Do you know the show Ab Fab? Of course. So yeah. Edina Monsoon and Patsy Stone. Yeah. So I put the two together, and then that's, that, that was Eddie that. Stone. Yeah. I didn't share it outwardly at the beginning because I thought it's not at the sexiest kind of like, because it's a very like, you it's know. It's sort of sexy though, right? Someone yeah. who has a good sense of humor is very sexy. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's exactly the point. So let's keep it on the sex train here. Let's talk about your um, massages and body work. So what does that what does that look like? How did you get into it? It was sort of a COVID accident. I mean, I I had I had dabbled in sex work prior. I was I had I'd done some escorting a little bit. I found that to be a little bit more uh, challenging, or a little bit more crossing boundaries for me. And I was doing personal training and group fitness prior to COVID. And when COVID hit, there was basically nothing. And I mm. I thought I'd try this, and I just ended up being good at it. it. Ended up being like a really nice way for me to express. Uh, connection with people in a, mm. a trolled way. Uh, so it was like a little bit less vulnerable for me and really good practice for me to like connect with people and make money. So it just ended up checking these two 
these boxes and yeah. I've been nonstop since. It's funny because, you know, I think people just think sex work and they think prostitution. Um, but sex work can be a lot of things. I, for me, I think, you know, stripping is sex work because you're using sex, sexuality, you know, to, to, and, and, and in your case, there's touch and it's massaging and it's, and it's funny that, or interesting that, you know, people have different, you know, boundaries and lines where they, you know, cause I did porn, but I was not an escort. And I did yeah. try kind of like you. And I was like, mm, you know what? That's not for me. And no judgment, obviously. Um, but I was like, yeah, that's, this is not, that's not for me. That, that wasn't feeling right for me. And that sounds like it was your story too. It wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it, 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 I felt more uncomfortable and nervous escorting the, 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 the clientele was so different too with mm. escorting and on and, and massage unfortunately i'm not sure why that is there's also a lot of drug use mm. and people asking you to, to do drugs and escorting so there's right. a lot of red flags that i was like i don't even know if i want to even be tempting fate <laughs> with yeah. that type of thing and there's i feel like there's also a kind of a danger angle i mean if you're meeting somebody who's unknown in in a location like that in a hotel or going to their place i mean there's a bit of you know but there's a there's a lot of unknown i guess but maybe well, the massage that, is the that, same <laughs> uh well i mean grinder's the same so that, that's kind of 100 percent. yeah uh, yeah there's that's no, one of the reasons that, that's something that i've always kind of would get annoyed with people who would make assumptions about even escorting safety you know i was like i'm not sure how it's any different from Grinder. It's just a different platform, but it's basically the same thing. You don't 100%. know this person going to the house. You just, it's not a transaction. I mean, it's, it's a transaction, but it's it not is, a financial yeah. transaction. Things are being exchanged. Um, yes, I'm not an app user either. Like I way prefer going to the bathhouse or even just going out and then seeing something live in person, feeling that connection anyway. And that's how I operate. So I don't, I don't even use the apps. Yes. I, I haven't been on the, on an app well over a year and I, I enjoy it much better. I, I get yeah. overstimulated very easily and I just find it's too much stimulation all at mm. once. <gasps> that's you know? funny. I, that's, that's a good way to say it. Overstimulation. That's how I feel when I go to a strip club, for example, I get overstimulated. There's too much skin and stuff going on and I, it's like too much for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm overstimulated 90% of the time, but mm. <laughs> existence. How long have you been doing OnlyFans? OnlyFans I've been doing for a good four years in oh, yeah. different sort of intensities, like, I guess, throughout time. <clears throat> um, never fully, like, it's been very casual, I guess I should say for me. Um, particularly when I was in a relationship, I found it more more complicated and I hate it when things are complicated. So I mm. kind of like subconsciously just didn't want to do it. Yeah. Were you, what kind of content, let's say I'm, I'm watching this and I'm like, Oh, that guy's hot. I want to see more. What kind of content can somebody expect on your OnlyFans? Well, the stuff that's there is, is sort of your normal OnlyFans stuff. It's not particularly sort of unique, I would say. Um, normal you know collaborations with people um i feel like i just didn't obviously i like to put a little creativity and everything i just feel like i hadn't figured out my angle yet mm. and i still don't think i figured out my angle as far as what's that thing that makes makes my page unique and what 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 is that thing so i do I, i'm moving forward i'm trying to put an art angle onto it a creative an angle onto it um moving forward i want to do things like naked painting naked art making naked other things that are are sort of uh exhibitionist and sexy but not just just fucking or just just a jerk off yeah um so i'd say for now it's it's what you might expect of any only fans page but uh, i i'm i'm pivoting but stay tuned stay tuned yeah <laughs> Well, I think you're right. I think you need some kind of, well, I, I, I see a lot of similarities between you and me too, because I'm not just 
fucking or I'm not just like doing naked stuff on OnlyFans. Like I feel like there's I do porn star bedtime stories where I'm I'm telling stories of my life, but it's very it's done in a very flourishy way. And I, I find I, I need to have creativeness around sex yeah. as well. Um, because just flat out sex is not fulfilling enough for me. It's not enough. Yeah, exactly. And, I, and again, I, I get I'll get overstimulated with the idea of collaborating with somebody all the time. Uh, I have so much anxieties in my life. I have illness anxiety, so I get very nervous about STIs. So that um... can create, uh, you know, manic and stressful things in my body if if I'm not being conscientious. Um. Yeah, so I I I really want to like dive into a nice practice where I can root it in, in myself and being creative with myself and exploring my independent sexual sort of world, and sprinkling some collaborations around when it when I feel safe enough. When it feels right. Yeah. You know. But like on on X, it's like. Every, you just get messages all the time where oh i'm traveling to toronto and i'm just like i don't No, these guys are my, hustlers man. my people pleaser wants to like <laughs> wants to be, oh yeah of course but yeah um, it's just not always going to work out for me i have to be in the right place yeah well I'm, i guess the stars aligned for us it came at the right time for you exactly, exactly. <laughs> when, we, when we filmed our scene yeah i, fe yeah, I, I feel the same way i get a lot of anxiety around collaborations too and i find um it's hard to set them up. People are kind of flaky or yeah, there's a lot of canceling yeah. and back and forth and ghosting and stuff like that. So it's a lot, it's time consuming and it's energy draining. And I don't, and to be honest, and I don't know about you, I haven't seen your content, so I don't know your collabs versus your maybe solo stuff, how it does. But for me, my solo stuff does just as well as the collabs. So I'm wondering like, well, what even is the point of doing collabs? Yeah. For sure. For sure. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. That's where I kind of got to that same place. And I, I feel like I enjoy myself more having a candid moment with the camera and sort of playing to the camera more versus playing to this, the scene partner more. Yeah. Uh, I find it more of a turn on. Yeah. In, in, in a lot of what instances. And I've spoken to like a lot of OnlyFans creators and a lot of them get in their heads about perfecting perfectionism and making a perfect product and looking great and the lighting and the, that also is very draining and stuff. And I think one of the beauty, beautiful things about OnlyFans is that it can be raw and more real and it's oh, okay. Yeah. It's okay that it's rough around the edges because, you know, it's not supposed to be studio quality, you know? Sure. I'm, I'm like, I'm either, I love like the type of porn I like to watch is really sort of like bathhousey with like a sh harsh spotlight, like walking around the darkness. Oh, wow. Showing different things. <laughs> you never get the full scope of it. And that's kind of part of the fun. But then uh. I also really love beautifully shot, almost cinematic. But I, I don't really care about the standard uh, OnlyFans get up where it's like, oh, camera here, camera here. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. It's very boring, I think. Yeah. I think it's important too. Like I remember in my porn days, um, it was it was rare, but I had worked it into my contract that I got to approve my co-stars. Because for me, and this I think goes back to the escorting and I couldn't escort, is that if I don't know who it is, in the sense of if there's no connection, like we're starting from nothing, I've never met you, we've never talked, it could go either way, really. So you're kind of taking a chance. Okay, let's take a bit of a left turn and start to talk about your art, because I know that's an important part of who you are. Um, is that your stuff behind you? Yes, that is mine. Oh. On a, an older piece, but yeah, I mean, it's in, I think it's important to even bring up in this context, because it is such a big reason uh, why I, I got into sex work, right? Like, um, you have to make a compromise. It's either you go a career path and you let it your art go, mm -hmm. or you find another way. And it just seemed like there wasn't any other way. And I had this natural thing that I could exploit or capitalize on in the, the same way any other person who has a skill or 
a natural ability that can capitalize on it. It could be mm-hmm. sales, it could be uh, engineering. It could. Everybody seems to be able to do that without uh, any sort of problem. And I just got to this point where I had to make a decision: how serious am I about my art? And I'm not willing to 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 bend on it. And I want to keep pursuing it in a real way. And this is the best way to do it, where I could work few hours and make enough money to support myself and feed into the to my practice and mm-hmm. that's what i did and it's it's changed my life it's changed it's made me be able to be an independent artist mm-hmm. a real like independent artist i know people that are artists and they're very talented and it makes me sad because they don't they haven't done what you've done which is find a way and i know it's not easy and i think in a way you're kind of lucky because you are already open to the sex world idea. It's not like a stretch for you. It's not like you're feel like you're sacrificing something or giving something up of yourself. I think uh, well, I, I, it was at first, right. It, it, it was truly uh, a symbolic death of an old version of myself. I had to let go of uh, this idea of purity, this idea of, Oh, you did. Thoughts. Oh, interesting. I, uh, that was very straight, narrow. I, I wanted you a certain way. I, uh, the going into sex work was like a a true symbolic death of this like version of myself that Mm. ultimately was not, was not even as clear was kind of more ego than, than honest, I think. So it was a real spiritual thing for me going into sex work and becoming the person that I would like to be. Right. It sounds like it was a bit of an image thing. Like it's that you were the person you were trying to be the person that you thought people or that you wanted other people to think you were. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And almost unattainable perfection. And I just wanted to, I wanted to kill that version of myself. So I didn't have that expectation anymore. Yeah. Scared. I was scared all the time. I was scared of my sexuality. I was, I, I needed to go this way so I could, I even at age 32, I hadn't met my sexual self. I had to discover it like wow. really. Brave. Well, so good that you finally did. Well, yeah, exactly. Everybody should be able to discover and develop their, their sexuality. Oh my goodness. Many of us are stunted because of upbringing, whatever it is, religion. It doesn't, you know, there could be anything, right? Yeah. Well, and I would think that also by becoming your true sexual self or finding your sexual self would only make your art better. Exactly. Well, they're so close, right? They're, they're, yeah. Sex and art, for at least in my practice, are very much in the same sort of world. It's mm-hmm. it's a animalistic, subconscious, free flow expression. Um, very of the moment and you that's what that's what you want your sex to be like you really yeah. want to feel you know flowing and you don't want to be thinking about sex while you're having sex it's it's about nope. letting go and finding flow state right i really admire artists for just being in touch with that part of themselves because i've i've become better at that but i'm a little bit of a control freak and i get in my head so i really uh, admire the sort of freedom and uh, letting go that I think a lot of artists have or need to create good art. Sure, but they also need what you have as well to kind of function and to keep things going. So <laughs> sure. you, wanna, you wanna cultivate it on both ends. That's true. Who can, uh, do you have any inspirations? Like who artistically are you inspired by? Do you have any artists well, that you the, look up the big to? one that will come up all the time for me is Agnes Martin, okay. for obvious reasons. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I, I had asked you about that privately, but I'll ask you publicly now. So explain the tattoo on your chest. Yeah. So this is a piece, a sketch by Agnes Martin, my absolute favorite artist. She uh, did grids in the 60s, and uh, the grids meant to her emotions without cause, uh, notions of the sacred innocence of nature innocence of a tree and it really like clicked Mm. for me um and i put this 
on my chest because I love her so much and she's influenced my work so much. And now this tattoo is just like, I, if I have my shirt off, it, I, I get so many people asking about it. Of course. Everywhere. Of course. I didn't fully expect that when I got it, which I guess is a bit naive, but I'm, I really love that this like tattoo is like really catches people's eye and like they really are, they see like a sense of spiritual in the tattoo and mm -hmm. that it means important and that that's so cool it definitely emits something and it, it it draws people in to ask you about it which is nice because then a lot of people i would assume i've never heard of her before but of course now i have so by you having that yeah, people you ask and now school, you're yes. of course well then yeah for yeah. sure because she's yeah. one of those she, all, her, her paintings are worth millions of dollars right if, if you I mean if you don't, if you don't know art, art then yeah exactly you, you have no idea and you may not even recognize it as art because it's it, it isn't a traditional means of making art these are just lines in a grid yeah that does look particularly artistic but yep I could see some people would I think art can look like many 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 different things for sure so right yeah, can take yeah, exactly. can take any form really yeah right? and for me it's it's been a good social thing because I'm I'm an introvert I don't particularly like going up to people I don't know to have people come up to me and to like mm. rid me of this burden I much better, <laughs> much better yeah you could have just tattooed come talk to me on your forehead but yeah yeah this then, is nicer yeah. yeah what um so what mediums do you work in I see paintings behind you but I think there's been other I've seen you on Instagram sculpting and stuff yeah well I'm, I do pottery as well pottery um so the world in which I work is called uh, art brute or brute art. So it's like a French term and it's art that is inspired by subconscious uh, art of, the ch of children, uh, primal art, uh, and it's about play. Okay. So I'm not really bound to one type of material. I, 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 I use whatever makes sense in the moment whatever's mm. there at the moment but heavily i'll be using acrylics oils inks um but uh resins i love resin i love using found objects uh creating ready-made stuff and pottery has been the, over the last two years has been just such a a joy because it's it's so uh it's got so many rules you have to do things in pottery or it just as you can't do it okay or practice was chaos every no rules everything goes yeah and pottery is like a structure that really changed my perspective and how i want my practice to look and how i want my practice to mature mm. to have, have that structure but still leaving space for the moments of chaos it's been a real welcomed change and uh yeah i love pottery it's so fun it's nice to give yourself the freedom i think to do different mediums depending on the moment for as an artist i would assume the the freedom of that is nice as well yeah and to like walk into feeling uncomfortable um to have an established process or way of creating and have that be torn down to have to rebuild you know in these parameters mm -hmm. is really healthy for an artist to do and pottery is really the thing because I, I think during covid like many of us, I, I just, I took a break because I'd, I'd never taken a break from production in like 10 years. I've always been producing and I just needed that time. And then I got into this pottery class and it really just like cracked open mm. Pandora's box and really opened everything up. And now I'm producing so much again. Yeah. I think that's a good point. I think uh, as artistic individuals, I know for myself, I'm always creating I'm, my podcast and the YouTube and yeah. OnlyFans and, and everything. And we need to give ourselves a break. Yeah, yeah. That pause, that that even just a moment to not have a thought, to yeah. just observe your environment, uh, observe stillness in your mind so that you can see some of the uh, good ideas that you might have. Because there's yep. so much clutter, right? There's so oh my many God, yeah. anxieties and clutter, and it can be hard to figure out what you even want to do. For sure. And there's that little voice that says, you know, if you stop, what's going to happen? It's all going to go away. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, it's like, Absolutely. and you're solely responsible for everything. 
So it's not like you work a corporate job. Hey, here's your two weeks vacation. Okay. You're forced to go off. And this is like, it's all up to you. So you're like, don't fuck oh, yeah. it up. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Oh, it's so easy to overwork when you're doing your own thing. Massage. It's so easy for me to just say yes to every, every booking, even if I'm exhausted or it's like one in the morning. It's like, and then I'm like, oh, it's an hour. I mean, I, I, I'll it's take money. It. It's an hour. I'll just do yeah. it. Anyone going into it will do sort of decently well out of the gate because you're new. Yeah. But unless you're bringing something to the table as far as like a, a good service, a good, a really good massage. Sure. Um, it's going to be hard to maintain any of that. Yeah. That's my, that's been my intuition about it. Um, I know I give a really great massage and it's like a spiritual sort of almost tantric meditative mm. thing where I'm able to connect with the person and, very involved i use my whole body uh my body to body work has been like the thing that people just love and it's a special practice because most massage practice is very very taxing on the practitioner your hands your arms sure. body to body is healing for both of us i'm 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 using my my shoulders my chest uh, my my whole body to massage someone else, which is then in turn massaging my body through mm. their body. Oh, um, sneaky. And it creates a real <laughs> connection. Yeah, real sneaky. Um, that Those changes in my practice have just made it so much easier because my hands were getting so busted up or I'd get... Uh, uh, tinnitus or tendonitis in my in my hands and i don't get that anymore because I, I i rely so heavily on the rest of my body so for everybody who's watching well let me ask one question first and then, then i'll say what i'm going to say um where can people is your art for sale yeah generally speaking it's for sale i'm working on getting a show together now because i have so much new work but anything someone might like is certainly up mm -hmm. for grabs on, on my on my Instagram. So so to that point, I'm going to put all of the links that you want me to put, it's going to be in the sure. description below this video, people can get in touch with you um, about the massage about your art, if they want to purchase something your only fans link, all, all of those things, I'll make sure to link below. So if anybody's watching this, and they're curious, it's all down there. I have one final question for you. Um, and this was part of your bio. So you said, quote, so we're talking about art and like the massage, the erotic massage, you said, quote, these two endeavors serve as profound avenues to explore and connect with the sacred. I am yeah. fascinated to know what that means. So, like, what is the sacred is the question, firstly, so if we can, yeah. sacred is, it seems to be a human anomaly that has been going on since we were hunter and gatherers creating cave paintings and this experience of something very very deep and very abstract before we even had words to know what that is and we know it's continued through out history because of religion because of spirituality because of because of everything you see where people feel moved deeply hmm. um, it's a human human anomaly and uh that's where that's why I make art because I'm really questioning and looking at what what that feeling of the sacred is outside of any dogma and I I get that same experience through my massage through like finding a, a like a centered place and tuning myself so that the person on the table can like get to the the sort of place I'm at and I, I help tune them into this place of feeling safe, sexual, and sacred, the sacred space. And it's all about emptying your mind and, and just looking at it and then sharing that with somebody. I think that really kind of that bubble of sacred is feeling it, seeing it, sharing it. And I do it with both of these things. So they're both different ways of seeing it and sharing it. And I love doing that. Would you say, I love that it's not religious. Is it, would you say it's spiritual? It, uh, I, I would even like, or is that... be hesitant to say spiritual because yeah. 
even that is dogmatic. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really interested in looking at this feeling of sacred outside of any language at all. Um, but I, to simplify things, I think it is like a, a, a spiritual type of feeling uh, more than anything else. But I, I don't want any any dogma as, sure. as far as even the spiritual sort of modern neo-spiritualism dogma attached to at least the way I process it. But it's certainly this thing that humans can experience that we all have a right to experience and everybody should know how to experience it, no matter how you get there, spirituality, religion, or otherwise. Maybe that's, you know, I, I hate when people are like, what is your purpose? Why are you here? Well, maybe that that's why we're here, right? To connect with the sacred. Yeah, yeah. In, I think, in whatever and, way and shape or form it, that, that means exactly, for you. Exactly. However you get there, because it's... I mean, that's just part of our human story, but it's it would be a real shame to live your whole life and never have known how to get there, even for a moment. But you seem to have figured it out. I can do it. For yourself, <laughs> right? You know, it would be great. If you could figure it out for other people, then you could make a little business out of that. Well, yeah. right? I mean, I guess that's what I'm trying to do, right? Well, that's what you do through your art and the massage. My right? art, if people yep. can see something sacred or if they can experience sacred through my massage, I feel like I've done my job. 100%. Kyle, aka Wyndham, thank you so much for coming on Queerly Us, the podcast today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you thank for you, having friend. me. Thank you, friend. And for the rest of you, I will see you in the next episode of Queerly Us. Hey.